Why? Why did I set my Goodreads goal for 100 books this year? Last year was a record for me. I read 79 books. My target then was just 72. But why did I choose 100 this year? This year I chose 100 because it looks and sounds impressive. It's really just a vanity metric. Would you be impressed by someone who'd read 100 books in a year? I'm also curious to see if I can actually achieve it. My reading has certainly increased since I've been creating booktube content. Welcome to my channel. I'm Jim. My channel, books, reading and stuff. Do you have a Goodreads target for this year? For books read in a year? Are you on track? Let me know in the comments. In the rarefied atmosphere of booktube, 100 books is really not so impressive. Many booktubers read far more <coughs> Steve Donahue. <laughs> it's now May and I find myself three books behind target. I'm not too worried. Usually my reading picks up in July and August because there's not much work for an English teacher here. In July and August everybody is relaxing. I've read 35 books so far, according to Goodreads. But have I really? Looking at the last 10 books, six were proper books. Blind Assassin was even a bit of a chunker at 521 pages. But the others? Two of them were short stories. There was Wildcat by Sarah Paretsky and A Problem at Sea by Agatha Christie. Uh, Iggy. Iggy's a novella. It's just 85 pages long. And Bambi. Bambi and the Prince in the Forest. This might qualify for May of the Moderns. It was, it's a coming-of-age story, first published in 1923, by Felix, written by Felix Sultan, but it's a children's picture book. The productivity gurus like Ali Abdal claim to read a thousand books a year. But most of that reading is using a summary service like short form or blink list and he'll link an affiliate link in the description. What's scary is the guy was a medical doctor. I wonder if he actually read the medical texts he was supposed to read. I'm not a speed reader. I sub vocalize like most of us do when I'm reading a book. Woody Allen quipped. I took a speed reading course. I read War and Peace in 20 minutes. It's about Russia. I could read more by listening to audiobooks. I rarely listen to audiobooks. I don't drive here in Tbilisi. I might have hundreds of little cars like this Volkswagen Beetle here, but I don't have a real car. I walk or I take the metro or the bus. I did try Audible, their free trial. It was interesting and slightly surreal experience. I was walking around Tbilisi, listening to Stephen King's The Stand, a book about a deadly pandemic, and I was listening to it during the pandemic in 2021. But Audible is not for me. Scott of Gunpowder Fiction and Plot made a good video about why he quit Audible. I'll, make, I'll put a link here. I think I'll stick to physical books where I'm reading with my eyes, not with my ears, and e-books. I have Kindle on my phone. This is Benediction by Kent Haruf, which Mark Nash recommended in his review. I have three physical books I want to finish by the end of the month. Asylum by Madeleine Rue, which was chosen by my viewers against Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn to, for Horror Mayhem. Orlando, which I'm over halfway through by Virginia Woolf. I started this with for Trans Girl April and it's now part of May of the Moderns. And The Night Circus, which was top on my TBR, and I still haven't started it. I've often said that reading is not a competitive sport. The true essence is losing ourselves in the pages, savouring every word. Relishing the joy of a well-told tale. 
how will I feel by the end of December if I hit my target or if I miss my target I don't know that my friends is for a future video if you enjoyed this video you can like and subscribe below and I'll see you on the next video goodbye